seeing the building as a as a uh, as a psychological structure. So understanding those buildings and then integrating those buildings into our into those in, into our daily lives. Hello, I'm very excited to be joined today by Sono Hachi from Bead. Um, Sono, it'd be great if you could just give yourself a brief introduction as to you know, who you are and what you do at Bead. That'd be great. Sure. Sure. Thank you, Scott, for having me as well. And I'm Sono B uh, from Bead, and I'm one of the co-founders in Bead. So what we do is basically we are developing technology that is analyzing uh, human behavior in commercial buildings. And then integrating that behavioral analytics and into buildings operations, starting with the uh, like HVAC system and then moving into space optimization so that those buildings are becoming more and less like an adaptive intelligent buildings. Excellent. So I know we've uh, we've spoken before and there's an article on the website about your technology, which, uh, you know, if you haven't, if any of the viewers haven't seen it, I'll put a link in below. So go and have a look at it. Um, the whole point of these videos that I'm trying to do is really trying to understand kind of the human behind these wonderful technologies, trying to understand what it is that drives you, that makes you tick, and what kind of impact that you're trying to have with what you're doing on the world around us. So, you know, it'd be really good to understand from your point of view, why is it you do this? You know, there's a million things you could be doing with your time, but how did you find your way here and mm -hmm. what do you hope to achieve with this? Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. I mean, I totally agree. So, uh, I mean, most of the people are thinking like uh, doing these, especially in those times, these times that we are in. So uh, being an entrepreneur and doing, trying to do those startups is really like difficult and crazy. Uh, but uh, my point of view is always like before we started Beat, I was also working in in, in a really large corporate, uh, like that was uh, focused on like that has like huge different fields as well. But I was more on the uh, all the build, all the building technologies and energy management division. So and I was always responsible for emerging markets, new market entries. And at that time, I was always seeing that as you know, like the bigger those corporates and companies get, the uh, the speed of innovation and being really agile is is, is fading away. So and uh, and you will re you really would like to do something and change something and but also do something that is also affecting uh, like people's life. In in our case, I was always like uh, focused on buildings, like commercial and commercial buildings, not like too much uh, to do with residentials. But uh, at that time, I was always like um, thinking like like how we can use and see uh, those buildings in a different way as well. Not like only trying to make those buildings smarter, uh, but more integrating those buildings into our daily life. So that was really fascinating to me. But, you know, like, as you said, as I said, like uh, the bigger the company gets, the, the bigger, the more uh, difficult it gets to convince executives to do something to change something. And, and that was the reason why uh, I said, okay, uh, uh, I got my experience, I know, and, uh, and right now I need to do the next step and move uh, to the other side of the table and then uh, like start something, really developing something uh, that is not like uh, a next version of X, but more a new uh, new technology that is changing the whole infrastructure. So, and that is why we, why, why I started with my friends Beat and, and right now I am really happy. Of course, it is always difficult but as soon as you see that you change something, and especially in those in these difficult times, then you somehow, some, you somehow say that okay, look, we can continue making that because it's really working. But also, it's also changing a lot of things as well. Uh, that's really interesting, and uh, yeah, I really enjoy yeah, hearing about some of the use cases that you're mm -hmm. you're uh, bringing to mark in some of your insights. Yeah. Um, but. Just, just go back onto that. You know, you wanted to do something that impacted people's lives. You wanted to mm -hmm. integrate, you know, um, take the data from buildings, so not just kind of smart buildings, but intelligent buildings. Yeah. Um, in doing that, 
how how is that going to make people's lives better? In that case, we are uh, focusing on two verticals. One, uh, the buildings itself. And especially in the first part, uh, we are uh, we need to like understand the effects of the buildings in smart city projects and applications. That meaning that we need to understand first of all like how those buildings affect the city life, uh, especially like public transportation. So that is what we are really focused on. And like I can give you an example, we were working with a couple of municipalities on really small sized uh, like pilots. And the, the idea was how we can integrate those usage patterns and occupancy patterns into public transportation, like taxi drivers, bus routes, and optimizing their routes so that we can reduce like those traffic, but also optimize the time that we are using from commuting to, from one building to another. And uh, because everyone was really like isolating buildings from those kind of applications, but if you can integrate that analytics and then create those connected systems, that can really make a difference. And, but secondly, uh, also the buildings itself. So what we were, uh, especially COVID also showed us like, we need to understand how we use those buildings without depending on human input. So we need to understand like, okay, how the usage patterns are. We need to optimize the space usage, but also connecting to that, we need to optimize the comfort levels and reduce their energy rest as well. Because right now uh, the biggest problem in those energy rests are, uh, are caused by those commercial buildings. And like either overcooling, overheating buildings, using unnecessary big systems. So that is also, for example, causing another problem because we don't know actually how how the building's life cycle, day cycle, will change before you invest in those kind of technologies. And that is the reason why we are saying that we need to concentrate and focus on making those buildings more intelligent instead of trying to make them more smart. And so that they, those buildings will become like a, a living ecosystem instead of being like left as a concrete structures that will never change. Uh, and those are the ones that are that we are really focused on, like basically to optimize the sustainability, but also reduce the carbon footprints as well, because that, all, all those are connected with itself. So if you can see those buildings as a source of data instead of like as uh, as, as like concrete structures, then it will change and affect a lot, uh, mm -hmm. especially people's lives. Uh, but also recently, as you as you know, like the health and uh, and and also like preventing overcrowding. That's fat, yeah, really, really, really uh, fascinating. So, you know, what I what I take from that is what you're working on is you're working on a solution and solutions that can, you know, help all the way from reducing congestion, reducing um, energy consumption. Uh, giving people back time but also um, improving health through understanding the air and the environment that you're sitting in um yeah it sounds so from yes. the technology linking the technology to things like the united nations sustainable development goals i think there's so many ticks in so many boxes yes. there it sounds like a it sounds like a no-brainer to me it's gotta do it um exactly so exactly that needs to change yes <laughs> yeah absolutely so um yeah, from from your personal inspiration, what was it? Was it the was it the kind of your corporate experience that made you think? You know what we need to do is we need to really understand what these buildings are, are like. Or was there some other aspect that kind of mm -hmm. led you to this particular focus with mm -hmm. the? Uh, in my case, it was like um, my interest in buildings, like because I was also really fascinated about fascinated about architectural. Mm -hmm. and uh, like designing buildings and but like how they call it like more uh, adaptive design like that is I think what is really fascinating bigger because I was seeing that okay look like we are creating like autonomous robots we are creating like these really like autonomous factories but we are not doing anything on the building side but at the end of the day we nearly spent like right now it is even 100 percent like our lives inside those buildings and and even there is a research that is calling the next generation as an indoor generation. And uh, that is uh, actually happened right now, but that makes it much more important to understand those buildings, but not uh, to see the building in a, in, a, in a, like creating a new technology, but more seeing the building as a, as a, uh, as a psychological structure. So you know, understanding those buildings and then integrating those buildings into our, into those, in, into our daily life. So that was really fascinating theme. Like, 
uh, like thinking like, okay, maybe two buildings can speak with each other and share data. Like we as humans share data and we call that like sharing our experience with other people, with our children, uh, with our friends so that they don't do the same mistakes. So that can happen the same way uh, that we see buildings as well. And that is, I think what is really fascinating me. Like, and that is also the reason why we are right now speaking with uh, really different, uh, different like academic people as well, like from psychology, mo moving into sociology, and then uh, like integrating their point of view into our technology as well, so that we can create those, let's say, 360 weave of a building, and then not only, as I said, trying to uh, like monitor something or trying to remotely open or close something, but more uh, changing those buildings into into really living ecosystems. Wow. And then if, if there was somebody listening to this who wanted to kind of get involved or, you know, follow your, your career or how you got into this, what would you suggest? Where would you send them or point them towards to get some inspiration or some ideas of how they could do something like this too? Yeah. I, in my case, especially if you like, there are two points, like for the younger generation, like students, I, re I really recommend them to work in a corporate for, for some time, not maybe their whole lives, but to see and to understand how those big companies are working. And uh, so that they see uh, in the, uh, the way the, the business is done on that professional level. And then uh, I would strongly suggest that um, not to focus only on just one type of technological solution, but more see it on a wider perspective as well. As I said, like speak with, for example, like artists, and go and speak with, uh, with like other uh, academical uh, stuff and even like speak with doctors, speak with physicians, like get their feedback about what you are doing, especially for example, in, in, in building technologies, real estates. It's not only concrete structure, construction, like smart technology, it is more like really a sociological effect that, you, that at the end of the day, that is our environment where we are living, where we are like speaking and connecting and this kind of stuff. So uh, that is, I think also what the future will bring like these uh, in these connecting uh, those different kind of verticals and together uh, and create a, a really like um, um, a human kind of technology in focusing on building. So, I mean, the, the, the feedback that you are get, getting from those different uh, people is really, really important so that you understand what to develop, uh, but also you understand how that your approach is seen in other professionals as well. So that is definitely I would suggest to do. And that's really interesting because you bring up a topic that again is 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 one of these things that is coming more and more into the conversations I'm having. This idea that you know, it's not just technology for technology's sake. It's yeah. technology and human. You know, some yeah. call it humanity 5.0. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some call it human centric technology. Um, but yeah, I remember the first. I think it was a Mobile World Congress where one of the keynote speakers was a professor of ethics. And for me, that was the first time I'd seen this merger of soft skills and hard skills coming together in a, such a pivotal moment. But what you're talking about here is not just ethics and AI, but it's, it's a lot more than that. How do you bring the human in, in technology together to create something more powerful yeah. and more usable? I think yeah. maybe from your, from your side, it's a question for you. It's um, what you're trying to do is create these wonderful, wonderful kind of descriptions and living buildings. Um, now, um, quite often we see technology getting in the way of the greater good. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to, how do, how do you go about making sure that technology isn't just, isn't you know, the enabler, but also the barrier, so humans can really get the most out of what you're doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, in our case, it is, uh, you should really like bring the technology in, in a level that uh, people can engage with it. And uh, that is really important so that you don't do something or develop something that is working in totally another level, like purely high tech, deep tech, and people are not really like engaging with it. And at the end of the day, that's also causing the, uh, the fear against those technologies. So, but if you can bring it on the level that even like tenants or like employees or 
uh, building owners can interact with it. So, and it can also like, uh, let's say like prepare the building for them, for example, like it, uh, the building can think and then give feedback without like giving uh, a co concrete inputs as well. So that is, I think what is really important. And then that can also like bring down all these barriers as well. And like, not only like the fear of uh, like losing your job or losing your position, but more uh, seeing the technology in a way that you see your colleague, you see your friend. So like, okay, that is something that is can helping me. That is something that is uh, like more and less like a human way of technology. Like, okay, that is, for example, I don't have a good mood today. It can change the environment. I don't have like, uh, let's say I have problems in this kind of thing. It can like prepare the building for you. And I think that is really important to, to lower those barriers as well. And, uh, and that is not, not only, by the way, like in building technology, it's also like happening in healthcare as well, for example, especially because of COVID. You bring up a couple of other points I want to dive into there quickly, maybe. So with COVID, we've seen this mass migration out of big buildings and kind of working mm -hmm. from cellars, basements, mm -hmm. corner of a room. Mm -hmm. um, what you're talking about isn't just the big buildings. That's a piece of it, yeah. isn't it? But I've yeah. heard you mention things like tenants and other places as yeah. well. So yeah. is your business um, adapting to that change? Do you see yeah. that change continuing or staying this way? What's your opinion? I mean, what we are definitely we are adapting. So, for example, right now we are focused on uh, like small and medium sized buildings a little bit more that cannot afford like buying or investing in really expensive and big uh, building management or building automation system, but also that don't have uh, those that big teams that can like manage and operate those buildings. But what we are also seeing is, especially in those big size, like large size buildings, like um, of course, like the biggest part is, as you know, like office buildings. And uh, what we are seeing and experiencing is that uh, they are changing like how those buildings are used, like, okay, converting office buildings into living spaces or co-living spaces. But in, again, in order to do that, you need to understand what was the usage trends and patterns. Like, okay, maybe the first 10 floors were used really like on a high level, but the, the rest was not used so that you can decide as an investor, okay, I can leave the first 10 floors and then convert the other floors into living spaces and this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But in order to make that decision, you need to again, understand and speak with the building so that the building can tell you, okay, look, that is my, my station right now. You can convert it like this and this kind of stuff without depending, uh, like, as I said, like in a, on, an, on an, a human input in those kind of uh, like decision processes. But also what we are seeing is especially, uh, that is also, I, that will also happen in, in the near future. Like, uh, creating those smaller uh, like parks like throughout the city like instead of you trying to go to in, in, in the in a building or go back you can just like call it like you like you call an uber you can just open your app and then find a pot and then go inside the pot do your meeting and go on so that will be I think also the next norm like uh, you know like in some countries they are creating those decentralized diagnostics uh, pots uh, so that instead of going to the hospital, uh, you have these uh, decentralized, uh, like smaller part hops and this kind of stuff. But that will also happen in office and meeting structures as well. Like uh, having these, uh, like you can take it and book it in 30 for 30 minutes and then you can hop it and hop out. So that is, I think really also the future as well, creating those uh, decentralized systems and then uh, making it more and more, much more efficient for, for the people itself, but also making it more uh, let's say, uh, reducing the risk a lot more as well. Hmm. Now you're on to another big topic, decentralization. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. We're covering a lot here. So, um, so on that topic of decentralization, maybe slightly outside of what you're looking at, um, mm -hmm. but let's, let's, let's see. So there's, with everybody now distributed or decent, I mean, I think we're really more distributed rather than yes. decentralized. I think there's a big yeah. step mm -hmm. to go towards that. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard a lot of people talking about how, you know, one, on one hand, the employer's responsibility um, for mm -hmm. being the health and well-being of the employees doesn't stop at the boundary of the office. Yes. Now people are working from home, they still have yeah. a responsibility to make sure the air they're breathing is safe, make sure they've got the yes. right lighting, cooling, heating, ergonomics. Yes. Um, yeah. So on one, I'd love your opinion on that. And then to the other piece is there's also conversation around how employers may 
um, need to encourage their, um, their staff who work remotely to gather in groups, to get together, to socialize and have these kind of hubs, these yes. cross sector or even you know, specific yeah. sector hubs. Yeah. So yeah, what do you think on those two points? I mean, one thing is definitely, of course, it will not like, uh, okay, everyone, everything will be right now uh, distributed and uh, people will stay at home. Never, no one will go back to the office. That will definitely not happen. So it will be step by step. Uh, but what is what will more happen is exactly as you said, like uh, instead of like calling back, like, I don't know, like 500, 1000 people back to the offices and these kind of stuff, but more uh, creating those, uh, let's say mobile uh, hubs or pods, as I said, like you can say that, okay, look, we have like uh, throughout the city, it is even like, it will be also like really, really effective for business travelers as well. That, that is, that, that's how I started. Like instead of you trying to find a meeting room or a co-working space, space, you can just have a, this one, like book one of those smaller pods in the city. And then uh, you can walk to the, to the pod and go in, do your meeting, do your, do your office work and then go out. So, and I think uh, that can also help, as you said, like bring those people again back together, but not on a mess, but more, okay, like that is your department. You have like a couple of pods throughout the city here. Even you can use use for example the parking spaces like uh like from a shopping mall from a supermarket and put like three or three or four different pots in it and then you can say okay like uh you can meet up here and let's say every friday we will meet up in this kind of with four people with five people and then do the face and again contact with your colleagues or with your potential customers and that is more and more happening i mean uh because as i said like the uh, the offices will stay, but it will be more, let's say, may, like more effective use. And uh, but uh, it will be more used for the people that really need an office space. Like if you are really doing something, pretty, even they are right now out of office as well. But still, like like if you need labs or if you do like really like high hands on development, this kind of stuff, they will need those office spaces. But mm -hmm. the rest, especially like uh, having these mobile meeting points that will that will really come and i think that will also uh disrupt definitely the office space like like uber disrupted the the really traditional taxi business and these like and it changed the whole infrastructure and that is also uh happening in especially in the office uh space as well is there is there anything that we haven't touched anything interesting that you know you would like to share with us mm -hmm. Oh, like in our case, uh, it is what we are right now experiencing is um, especially, uh, I mean, in, in uh, as I said, like we are right now really focused on integrating buildings into, into different verticals. So meaning that, uh, like, as I said before, like integrating buildings into smart city applications, but also integrating buildings into insurance industry, for example, like optimizing their claims process, integrating buildings into healthcare and, and reducing like uh, uh, overcrowding and optimizing uh, the buildings and like uh, preventing overcrowding. And, uh, and that shows us especially the importance of the data that we are creating from those buildings. And I mean, that is also what we are, why we are calling, like uh, we are converting buildings into their data sources in order to understand them. And, and I think that is becoming more and more important and uh, how we use, create data and how you use the data. And that is what we are see, what we are focused on for the following couple of years. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Sona. And um, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way of getting in touch with you? So the best way is I am definitely a lot on LinkedIn. You can just connect me, but also you can send just an email like to sonar at beat.digital. And I always reply and happy to connect as well. Excellent. I'll put the links just below. All right. Thanks so much for your time. And if you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you subscribe to the, uh, the YouTube channel and hit like. Thank you again, Sona. Mm -hmm.